Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Grassroots NASCAR Racing. My name is Scott and we're on a big adventure. So we are headed to Rockingham right now. Uh, just left the Houston area not too long ago. It's about 7.45 in the morning on Tuesday. Uh, I'm gonna try and get just past Atlanta today. Um, maybe about two hours past Atlanta and then I'll find a hotel to stop at. And that way, Wednesday morning, I'll just have maybe an hour, hour and a half drive or something into Charlotte. And uh, gonna head to CompCal tomorrow morning and get the mellow yellow car all decaled up correctly. So I'm really excited about that. But between now and then, it's gonna be a lot of boring driving. It's about, I think it's about 16, 16 and a half hours if you drive straight to get to Charlotte. So we'll probably do about 14 hours something like that today so but anyway let's get to it all right so it's about 5 p.m. I am about 15 miles uh, east of Montgomery Alabama had to stop and get some food. I was pretty hungry, so I snagged some uh, Taco Bell. Got a couple quesadillas, but man, starting at about 11 a.m. yesterday, my allergies just, boom, hit. And I've been having trouble just getting my nose to stop running, and, but man, like, when I stopped to get this food, my body was hurting. <laughs> so I'm hoping it's just allergies and it's nothing bigger, because that'll really suck if I'm getting sick way to Rockingham so cross your fingers I'm taking some medicine and uh, see what happens but hopefully once I get some food in me and more of that medicine kicks in I'll feel a little better and definitely want some good sleep tonight so we'll see how it goes all right day two this isn't the best way to start the day got a uh, flat tire on the trailer so I'll swap that out and we'll get back on the road All right, well that stunk, so I went to replace the tire, put my spare on there, and um, when, I, when I took off that tire, I noticed that the one in front of it, this one here, was missing a big old chunk. Look at that. I don't know how that happened. So, yeah, so I was like, man, I have to go to a tire store now. I was hoping to avoid that because I wanted to get up here on time, but wasn't able to do that, so. What they found was that actually this rim had a hole in it somewhere so it was a bad rim not a bad tire that's why that was flat so we just stuck the the good tire on this other rim and uh got me back on the road i was about two hours behind but i'm here at comcal so that's all that matters All right, everybody, the car is done. Let's check it out. There she is. Look at how good that thing looks. Brian and the boys really knocked it out over here. Look at that. All right, everybody, it is, what is today? Friday. <laughs> 
So today's the day I'm gonna head out to Rockingham, but first I wanted to make a few stops around Charlotte since the car is done. I have a little time before going up to the track, so I had to stop by Hendrick Motorsports. I'm gonna go check out the museum, see what's up there. I haven't been here in a little while uh, since, well, during COVID was the last time, so let's go check it out. Pit stop practice area. Check that out. Got everything all ready to go for their practices. All right, we are here at the track. We're rolling up to it anyway. I took kind of a back way through some windy roads. It was fun, but it's these roads here are so narrow. So having this trailer behind me, it's a little little sketchy sometimes. But here we are. Take a look. The rock. So we're gonna pull around to the other entrance where I'm supposed to go in. guys we are in the track let's get this car unloaded there's already uh, quite a few cars here about five or six of them over there people are all unloading so let's get the mellow yellow car out and join the fun all right guys it is Saturday morning far too early it's about 5 45 earlier than I wanted the place I'm staying is farther away than I thought from the track so I got to get up pretty early to get out here but we're headed to the track, had a good day setting up yesterday, so let's have fun today.
so I've been on the track twice now. The car ran pretty good uh, back in the garage. I don't know if I'm down a cylinder or what. It might be the spark plugs, but I need to check because I put new valve covers on it uh, last night. And I don't know if I might have bumped one of the plug wires off or something when I did that. So I'm going to check that out. But right now we're going to talk to a cool guy and check out his car. A lot of you guys probably saw this car uh, on TV last year at Las Vegas. This is JR51, Mark Martin's car. And the guy who restored it is Landon. He is here, so let's ask him a few questions. Woo! There's Landon. What's up, man? All right, so let's start at the beginning. How'd you get this car? So we first found it. Uh, God, it's a long story, but long story <laughs> short, my friend Thomas, who's here with us, uh, he went out to the hills right around here, somewhere just a few minutes from here in, in Rockingham and met a guy and the, he had a complete car there and Thomas was wanting to buy it and take the parts off of it because it had good brakes and stuff on it. It had a bunch of good parts on the inside that you could salvage off of a, a car. Um, well, he called me because the guy kept telling him, hey, this is a Mark Martin car. He raced it, he did this. Well, Thomas knew how much I was into Mark Martin and how big of a fan I was. Mm -hmm. So he called me, he said, hey, do you think this car could really be, the, be real? And I said, what is it? I said, what does it look like? So Thomas sent me some pictures and I said, oh my gosh, I just saw that car like last year, you know? Right. And I said, this is what this is what I was told. And I said, but at that time, between the first time I saw it and then, I've actually become friends with Mark Martin. So I texted him. I said, hey, I just did it. I said, well, Thomas, I'm gonna text him a picture of the dash tag and we'll see what Mark says. Mm -hmm. Took a picture of the dash tag, or had the picture of the dash tag sent to me, sent it to Mark, and the first thing he said was, I remember that car, it was my favorite car at Roush, and I raced it a lot. I called Thomas back, I said, do not buy that car and part it out. I said, if you want to buy it to drive it, I said, that's one thing. He said, I don't want it, man. He said, you're a Mark Martin fan. He said, you take it. He said, if, you're, if you want to restore it. And I said, absolutely. So I got in touch with the original owner and we went back and forth for about two or three months. I really did kind of slack on him on that part. I was just slow getting it, but we picked a day and drove over there and looked at it. And it did not look like this when we first got it. Um, it was actually a white, completely primered, almost like a white primer. Right. It had the 2000 Taurus updates on it, so a different nose, hood, and rear bumper cover. And we bought it, and I bought it sight on scene. The guy actually, what's funny is he had the story of the races at one, but he had no way to prove it. And just recently, you came across some documentation, right? So up until last week, on Wednesday, I think it was, all I had to go off of was Mark Martin's word, Jimmy Finnick, which was his crew chief, the car chief, Sean Parker. And I have a list of people on the back side of this board that we had made mm -hmm. of all the crew guys, because I messaged all of them that I could find, which there was a lot. I think it's a total of 12 or 13 people. Mm -hmm. All I would ask them was, hey, I have this car. I was wondering if you worked there back then. If you don't mind, I've got a couple questions for you. They're like, sure, what's the chassis number? And all I would tell them was, it's chassis 51. And I sent them a tag and they said, oh my God, that car won these every single person said it so i went off that yeah and i believe what mark says i believe that it's this car yeah there's some of the guys that built the car that were just so particular about things in the car there's no way it wasn't the car mm -hmm. but like you said we didn't have a true piece of paper that said this or this or whatever last wednesday a friend of mine his name's brian murphy uh he was a huge mark martin fan still is uh especially back in the 90s well, Mark, or Brian actually won a promotion where he won one of Mark's race used cars mm. in 98. It was JR48. Jeez. And it was a Thunderbird. He won it, and then <laughs> when he won the car, you know, he got to meet Mark and Jack and all them, got the car, and it was still like it raced, had the engine and everything in it. Well, they signed him up for the Valvoline newsletters that would go out to the, like, to associate sponsors, the team. Right. They would go to Jack Roush, you know, the people there. They would go to the... Uh, the news people at the track so they'll know what to say about the car when they get there mm -hmm. well we got the papers and uh, i actually have them here i can pull them out yeah the first one this is the the cover photo for the the news from valvoline uh -huh. and this is actually for the the brickyard 400 weekend of 98 because this car was also raced at the brickyard and it was the gold sin power car okay so that was a unique paint scheme so they wanted to make a big deal out of it so they put out a newsletter about it and really promoted it well you see here where it was written the year and the day and it says right here mark martin will drive the four tourists designated jr 51 yep. at the brickyard 400 the car which won at las vegas texas california and michigan 
That's awesome. So this is a whole big spiel. They send out these binders full of info, like car numbers, chassis, setups, info. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew there would probably be one for this car somewhere. I just would have to find it. But I kind of just, I was like, if it's meant to be, somebody will find it. And I knew Brian, he had all this stuff. And at some point, I knew he'd probably come across it. Well, he just messaged me one day. He's there like, it is. I've got something for you. He's got it. So point something out on here that was one of the most... I mean, you did a lot of the restoration stuff, I know. So yeah. what was one of the things on here that was the hardest? Like finding a certain part or that uh, gave you the most trouble or... I'm a, I overthink things and worry too much. So <laughs> I was terrified that we weren't going to get a nose and a hood and a rear bumper cover for it in time. Because mm -hmm. we had a six month deadline to get it done and oh, in time for it to be taken to Vegas. For Vegas. So really when we found the nose and the bumper and the uh, hood, I wasn't as worried until further down the line when we got the motor and transmission i was scared you know the trans isn't going to sit in the right spot the motor's not going to be in the right spot uh we fabbed our own mounts i had a guy that uh that has done other stuff for me in uh, the town i'm i'm from he actually did the paint work and the motor mounts and put the motor in uh thunderbird he actually did the motor mounts for this he stabbed the whole drive line and the only thing we really did me and uh, haley which is my girlfriend we brought it back home and I ran all the AM lines, plumbed it, hooked all the wiring up, redid some of the wiring with uh, a friend of mine from work. And, you know, we just basically buttoned it the rest of the way together. It was probably 75% done when we got it and we finished it the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. um, but the scariest thing had to be the, the, the panels, you know, getting the right panels. Because everything right between them is still the car. Right. Because when they updated to a 2000 Taurus, nothing changed but the hood, front bumper, and rear bumper cover. Hmm. When we first got the car, I pulled the windshield out and it was still primered. But inside the windshield trim was the Valvoline blue. Really? So the, the, the greenhouse is still the same, same greenhouse. Thing, huh? Because when, when the guy that painted it sanded it down, it still had the Valvoline paint on it. That's cool. And, uh, I mean, it, like you, you know how it is with these cars. It's just been a labor of love. So. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, there's so much on it from back then, it's crazy. This thing is so beautiful. Now, the dash tag is still in there. It's all there. Yeah, the JR51 tag. I'll get a better picture of that later. Like, it's so reflective <laughs> i want i want glass like that i want some new lexan ronnie hoover <laughs> all right well cool man this thing is beautiful thank you it's so awesome to see in person um let's walk around it real quick absolutely and guys if you uh give him a follow he just started his own youtube channel it's called a uh, race car revival yep race car revival so check out i'll, I'll try and put a link to his in the bot in the description but check it out so you can see him. He's he's going to be working on another one of Mark Martin's cars coming up here. So that, that, that'll definitely be cool. This thing is so damn beautiful. And he had it out on track already too. So was, you'll see some in-car footage from my car with this car right in front. Very, very cool. It's always great when you can see the actual cars, you know the history, and you get a good story with it. So anyway, let's go check on my car, see if we can get it running right. So, day didn't turn out the way I wanted to, unfortunately. It was a fun trip, but something's not right. I don't know if it's a spark plug that's bad. I don't have any spares. I tried cleaning it, and that just didn't do the job. Took off the valve cover to see if there was like a broken valve spring or something, but couldn't figure it out. So, got to get on track twice, but it just wasn't running right. So, head home and try and figure it out. So, I got the car all loaded up. We're ready to get out of here. Uh, one of the last ones out of here. There's still a few guys that are leaving their trailers here, I believe. But I'm going to try and get about maybe four hours of drive time in and then find a hotel. And uh, that'll be it for me. Keep heading home. So thanks for uh, enjoying the day with me as much as possible. And we'll see if we can enjoy the drive home. Take care. Good morning, everybody. Um, 
last day, headed home. Man, I'm, I'm tired. I was so dead when I got to the hotel last night. I, I couldn't film. I, just, I had to get in the bed. I had only gotten like three hours of sleep the night before. So, yeah, man, I was so beat. And today, my lower back is giving me issues. It's not going to be a fun drive home, unfortunately. Um, I've already been driving, driving for about two and a half hours south of Atlanta right now. You can see I'm just going through the the hills and the pine trees. It's going to be like this for hours. So, yeah, nothing terribly exciting. I'm listening to the Formula One race on the radio right now, and then later I'll listen to the NASCAR race from Las Vegas. Very sad news to hear about Chase Elliott breaking his leg. That sucks, but hopefully it'll be a quick recovery and he'll be back soon. So, let's get home. All right, friends, that is it. Back home finally. Uh, it's a couple days later, actually. Just now getting this thing unloaded. Had to go back to work. Got to pay for this addiction somehow. Uh, but the car is back in the shop here. Uh, front end looks pretty good. I only went on track twice, and I kind of tried to stay a little farther back from people than I usually do. So not much damage to the front, which is good. Um, my little screens held up pretty good that I made for the front. No real issues with those. So that came out all right. but. What I noticed is there are marks, but a lot of them are like bugs. <laughs> like there was a lot of flies out there or something. So got a lot of bug strikes, so just gotta clean those off. But overall, pretty, uh, pretty happy with the trip. A um, little bummed that I wasn't able to go out the last two times. And I'm gonna take a look at the car and see if I can figure out what that issue was. Hopefully it's just something small, but um, got the decals on. Got to hang out with all the great people. It's so much fun seeing all my friends out there and uh seeing all you fans a lot of you guys came up and uh told me that you watched the videos and stuff so i got to chat a little bit so it was awesome and it was really fun with the kids part of what i do is to share my love of nascar with people and hopefully create new fans and keep the sport growing so i let probably i don't know 12 or 15 kids climb in the car and that was really fun the, the looks on their faces when they're inside you know they kind of freak out and stuff so that was really cool, but um, yeah, it's a good trip. So anyway, uh, hopefully there's another trip in the next couple months. We will see. Wait, keep my fingers crossed on that. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Take care.